What's up, everyone? What's up? This is Miles Hunter Jr. here, and I want to welcome you to the Miles High Podcast. I'm starting things off a little bit different this year. 2021 is a new year, new beginnings, and I decided to jump into the podcasting space. So I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Wherever you're watching, thank you for listening, wherever you're listening. You know, this is something that I've had in my arsenal for quite some times of things that I wanted to do. And I figured, why not take advantage of the opportunity here in 2020? You know, at the Miles High podcast, you know, this isn't just something I'm doing haphazardly. You know, this came with a lot of thought. And and there's three things that I really want to accomplish uh, with this uh, with this creative space that I'm in. I want to first entertain you guys. Uh, I want us to have some fun. I want us to do some things that are um, are not not normal, not the status quo, you know. But I want us to have fun in the process. So I, I do want to entertain. Secondly, I want to educate. So I, I want to give you information uh, with the things that I say, the, the the people that I bring on from time to time, the the things that I introduce you guys to. I want to be very informative, and I want to be. Uh, able to give you information you may not have known or give you understanding that you may not have had before. And uh, that's just, you know, what what, what I'm here for. I'm here here to educate. I'm here to inform you. And then after I give you the information, I I want you to elevate. I'd I'd like to elevate you. And I want you to take everything that we do here, everything that you learn, everything you hear, and I want you to be able to apply it to your life, whether uh, professionally, personally, and even spiritually. Uh, to elevate yourself, you know, we 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 want to uh, go above and beyond who we were, you know, last year, yesterday, an hour ago. Uh, life is all about growth, and that's what I intend to do here at the Miles High Club. We want to be miles high above uh, the person that we were before. You know, we want to continue growing. So uh, to get things started, what, what I wanted to do was kind of just give a a brief history of, uh, of myself. Um, I'll just give you my, my story real quick. As, as we go through these episodes, uh, I think I'm going to be uh, really giving you a, an idea and a good sense of who I am as, as an individual. Uh, I, I, you know, those of you who, who may not know me, you may know my parents. Uh, I'll get into, into that uh, in this introduction real, real soon. But, um, you know, I think this is, this is a good platform for you to be able to really get to know uh, who Miles Monroe Jr. is. Cool? All right. So, and my name is Miles Monroe Jr. Like I said, I'm born and raised in Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, my parents were Dr. Miles and Ruth Monroe. Uh, you know, they <clears throat> were, I consider them to be, you know, some of, if not the greatest, uh, you know, pastors or kingdom teachers or, you know, religious leaders. Uh, that has walked this earth. You know, I I think my dad really left an impact. And even though, you know, they are no longer with us, it's been a little over six years now, I I still see the impact that that their messages are having. And, you know, it it inspires me every day to to go beyond and to elevate myself. And, you know, I hope to continue that inspiration to others. Uh, So, you know, I uh, honestly didn't really like or wasn't comfortable with being uh, Dr. Miles Monroe's son, you know, it came with a lot of uh, expectations. It came with a magnifying glass on my life, uh, in, in my opinion. And it was just something that I I just didn't like. It was just too much attention. You know, people always wanting to see and, and, and look at and notice what I'm doing and, and where I'm at. And, you know, all of this stuff that a, a regular teenager would, wouldn't like or would try to avoid, right? Um but, you know, uh, I think as I matured and, and, and grew into my young adult years, you know, I was able to really gain a better understanding of uh, who I was as an individual. And I gained a better acceptance of my, my family, my, my parents and uh, the vision that they had on their life and the, the life that I essentially um, was, was, was born into uh, it, it was a try. It, it was a challenging time for me, especially in my teenage years. You know, I went through the whole rebellion stage. Just kind of wanted to do what I wanted to do. Didn't really want to uh, be, uh, you know, tr- uh, put into uh, put into a box of any kind. You know, I, I wanted to be my own person. And 
I did a little bit of that. Um, but I think, it, it, uh, you know, my <clears throat> I always had a love for and a respect for my parents. So I, you know, regardless of what I did, you know, they and who they were and, and, and what they represented was all, all, always a part of my, my thinking, a part of my, my psyche. And it was something that um, really kind of, I guess, disciplined me in a sense. And, um, you know, yeah, so I, you know, didn't like being my dad's son or my parents' son early on. You know, funny funny enough, I, I could remember at a time when I was thinking maybe maybe elementary school, I uh, I actually I I I'd been, I I was like man God I wish you I was born into a different family like this family is just uh, this family I was born into comes with comes with too much you know imagine me in elementary school at the time thinking it was too much right but I'm sure we have a lot of individuals out there who may feel the same way or may have felt the same way and you can relate to what I'm saying and it, you know it's, it's just one of those things I think we we go through as as individuals as human beings. Um, and as we go through our development on a personal level. Um, so I, I did graduate high school in, in Nassau, Bahamas. I, I went off to Oral Roberts University. When I graduated high school, my dad actually gave me an ultimatum. And he was like, you can either go to, uh, it was the College of the Bahamas at, uh, at the time. Right now it was the University of the Bahamas. <clears throat> but he, he told me I can go to the College of the Bahamas or I can go to his alma mater, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Roberts University. And because at the time, I really wasn't interested in being in the Bahamas. I didn't want to stay in the Bahamas. I really wanted to get out. I took advantage of that opportunity. And I really didn't care at the time where I was going, you know, as long as I could get out of the country. You know, it was it was a plus for me. So I went off to R. Roberts University. I, I did my undergrad in international business with a minor in, in Spanish. Uh, so, hablo español un poquito. You know, I haven't been speaking it too often over the years, so I, I kind of lost it. But I do understand it to a certain extent, and I think I could handle myself in a conversation. Don't, 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 uh, don't quote me on that though. <laughs> but yeah, I um, graduated with my master, uh, bachelor's degree in international business and like a, a minor in Spanish, like I said. And then uh, maybe a year after that, I. Went on to do my MBA with a focus in entrepreneurial studies, and I did that in New Jersey at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Now, business has always been a part of my life, something that I always was so intrigued by. I can remember, you know, being a young a young kid and and seeing, you know, I would be driving on the streets and I would see these large buildings, and on the side of the buildings it would be like these names, right? And I always recognized the names, and at first. You know, I thought, you know, you, you start a business or you buy a building and you, you make up a name and you put that name on the building. And as I grew, I started to learn and, and understand that, you know, those names on the buildings, most the majority of them were family names. Right. And I, I always noticed like, you know, Hilton's, uh, uh, what do we have? Dillard's, you know, JCPenney, Sears. Uh, all of these large buildings, these large organizations with names on them. And I was so intrigued by, you know, especially like Walmart and Targets, like these types of businesses that people frequent and the business seems to be, you know, very successful. And I, I always used to tell myself, man, it would be great to uh, have a building with the Monroe name on the side of it, right, where we offer a product or a service uh, to million, millions of people. Um, and, and so, you know, from from seeing that or from envisioning that from a young boy, you know, and growing into the adult uh, man that I was at the time when I was uh, doing my MBA, I figured that uh, an MBA with a focus in entrepreneurial studies would have been perfect. And to be honest, I you know I'm I'm so excited. I'm I'm so I was so happy of that decision because it, it going through that process it really taught me how to fine tune the business skills that that I that I had. You know I have I like I said I loved business so I dibbled and dabbled in different businesses here and there um, from a from a young kid, you know, straight up to even adulthood right now. You know, I didn't realize it at the time, but as I look back uh, and uh, at the things that I've, I've done, I realized that, you know, being business minded was the common denominator. So that's something that I continue to do even today. Um, I'm, I'm always trying to think outside of the box. I'm always trying to challenge myself. I'm always trying to do whatever I need to do 
to push myself or to elevate myself uh, to that next level of me, right? And, and I think that's something that we should all be continuously doing on a daily basis. Uh, you know, so after I graduated with my MBA, had an opportunity. I was actually trying to find a, a job in the U.S. Right, I didn't have any intentions of moving back to the Bahamas. I wanted to find a job, start a career, <clears throat> meet a lovely female, start a family, and you know, your boy would have been straight, right? But funny how life is. Life, you know, you make plans and, and God laughs, is what they say, right? Um, so at the time when I graduated, the job market or the, the economy in, in and of itself kind of was on a downturn and no one was hiring. And, you know, my dad was assisting me and trying to, uh, he was assisting me on my, uh, on my job search. And man, that, that went on for a couple of months. And I could remember, you know, it was a day, it was in the fall that he called me. And this is after months and months of just, you know, putting resumes out there and, you know, speaking to friends and trying to to land a job somewhere and he was like man you know you've been looking for a job all this time you haven't been able to secure a job for you why don't you think but what do you think about moving home and working working with me and to be quite honest you know the minute he said it I I I could remember the conversation like immediately I thought of the the memory that I had as a kid in building a like seeing a building or having a building with the Monroe name uh, on the side of it. And I was like, man, this is that opportunity. This is me being able to come full circle into that thought and starting that process into building, into building that family name <clears throat> or to, into expanding that family name. Cause my dad had really uh, already did a, done a good job of um, developing and, and, and branding the, the Monroe name. So for me, it was, it was a no brainer, you know, even though I didn't want to move home to the Bahamas, uh, I, I couldn't turn down that opportunity. So moved home, started to work, work along with my dad. Um, and it was challenging at first. You know, I remember those maybe first 15 to 24 months. We, we went at it quite a bit. You know, uh, he, I, I had to learn. I, I realized that I needed to learn who he was and why he was, right? Uh, he has been my dad my entire life, but I really never... Um, worked with him in in that aspect so i never had to you know pay too much attention to the side of of him where you know decision making comes in the planning comes in the dedication and sacrifices that he made why he did those and you know just answering all of those questions that were important to our business relationship you know at that time and you know we we butted head a lot we butted heads a lot because you know, me being young and, and just graduating and I was moving home to work with, with uh, the family and, and whatnot, I figured, you know, I could implement all the ideas and the stuff that I that I had, right? And I wanted to, like, change a bunch of things, implement a bunch of things. And for him, it was like, okay, yo, slow down. Let's, 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 let's take a pause. Let's discuss where we're at. Let's discuss why we're here. And then let's see where we can take it from here. And, you know, for me, that was just too too unnecessary of a step at least that's what i thought at the time and that's i think that's what a lot of young people do right we don't really want to recognize or appreciate you know where where we are what we've gotten ourselves into when we talk about uh jumping into a business or getting into a career um but it's something that it, it like i said it took some time but after i realized that it was me who needed to slow down and, and really just be observant of where we were as an organization and where I could be able to implement the ideas and and the visions that I had for the organizations and expand them you know once I took that that step back you know things started to really turn into the in in the right direction for for me professionally and and for my dad's and I relationship and that's actually when I submitted to him uh, to being my mentor, you know, and, and funny enough, you know, my dad has been my, my father, obviously, for my entire life, but he's never, I've never submitted to him or I acknowledged him as a mentor to me. Obviously, he would mentor me as a son and, you know, give me advice and, and do all of these things that a father, that, that fathers should do. Uh, but in the mentoring relationship, it, it's a two-way street, right? And the, the mentor 
and the person being mentored, it needs to be an agreement between both of them where the, the mentee submits to the mentorship, right? And you, 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 you take correction, you, you take advice, you take recommendations, you, you know, you, you, you fully submit to that, that mentor. And that's something that I did at the time. And I'll tell you this, that is the single most best decision. No, I lied. That's the second Sing, second single most best decision I've made in my life. The first was actually deciding to move back home to work with my father. But submitting to his mentorship did so much for me as an individual. And I realize it more now that they're not here than I did, you know, when I was going through the mentoring process. And it, it, it just did so much for me, man. And, and it prepared me, honestly, for, for their, their departure, you know, their death. And uh, it was something that I didn't think I would have been able to understand or comprehend or be able to deal with. Uh, but, you know, six years removed from that, that time in my life, I, I think, you know, everything I've gone through in my life has prepared me for where I'm at now. And I know that everything I'm going through now is going to prepare me for where, I, where I'm headed. And that's kind of what I want this, um, this first episode, this, this pod to be about, Right. I want to talk about purpose and, and being intentional in how how we discover and how we develop our purpose. You know, I, I get this question a lot where people are confused or unsure of the why for their life. You know, there are five important questions that we should ask ourselves, right? Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What can I do? Where am I going? You know, those five questions... If you can answer them and if you can really wholeheartedly answer them in detail, uh, I think you would have life pretty much figured out, right? Because you would be a disciplined, focused individual who really ha- don't, you don't have time for distractions because you understand what, what and who you are and why you're here, what the, the things that you're able to do, the talents and the gifts and the abilities that you have. And where you want to elevate yourself to using all of those uh, those things that you have. And, you know, people just would, would be like, man, I, I, how do I find my purpose? How do I discover who I am as an individual? And, you know, my, I, 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 I divide it into kind of two segments, right? So the first segment would be more so the person who is like multi-talented, right? You have, you're so gifted in so many different ways where you you can't figure out which gift it is that you're supposed to use, right? Because I I always tell individuals, like if you try, if you're trying to discover your purpose in life, start with the gifts that you have, the things that you're good at or the things that you like to do or the things that you're passionate about. That's usually a, a good indicator of your purpose, right? So when trying to figure all of that out and you realize, man, I'm so gifted. I'm, 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 I'm just multi-talented in so many different ways I, it could cause a bit of confusion because you can't focus or maybe may un, may be unable to focus on uh, one particular gift uh, because you know at different times in your life or at different phases of your your development you know one gift is a, a bit more uh, in the lead than than the other right and what I, I had this conversation with a friend of mine recently and. I remember my advice to him, and I, I, I think it was something that it, it, I didn't think about it. it. I think it just, you know, it was just, for some reason, it was something that I said, and it, I shocked myself kind of when I said it, but I knew it was always in me, and I, I think I was able to articulate it at that time. And what I told him was, uh, you know, if you, you have all of these gifts, right, you're talented, you're gifted in, in all of these different ways, um, but what you may need to do is find the, the common denominator, find a thread that connects all of these gifts, right? Because obviously we have been given these gifts and talents for a reason, for a purpose. To discover that purpose, we need to find the, the, the what, 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 is, what are these gifts built on? What, what is the driving force that connects all of these gifts uh, to me? you know, as, as individuals, that's a question you need to ask yourself. And then you start to explore that. You, you start to uh, develop that thought, to develop that idea, try to think of ways to expand on a gift or connect to maybe two of the gifts or bring 
you know, others into the fold to to build on uh, your gift and and hopefully build on your, your purpose, uh, because our purpose are, are is, it's never for us, right? We're not here to just make ourselves successful or just to make ourselves feel good. You know, purpose is much more greater than that. And you know, just figuring out, you know, being a multi talented or multi gifted person, how all of those gifts connect, or what's the common denominator that connects all of those gifts. I think you will be a bit further along in really discovering who you are and, and why you're here um, than, 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 than before, than if you didn't try to figure that out. And then the second part of that, uh, that question of, you know, what is my purpose? How do I discover my purpose? You know, because you, you, you may have identified your gift, right? And this gift has, has really allowed you to gain or attain uh, some form of success, Right. And you're you're you've achieved uh, some notoriety or you have achieved some financial success or, you know, you, you feel that you've uh, you know, you've made it in some way. You're, you've comfortably made it in, in, in a way. And what you need to do. Uh, but but at that time, sorry, when you are at that height of success or at that level of success, you still feel empty. Right. You, you still feel a void. You still feel like there is something there's still something missing, right? Because this doesn't feel like purpose for me. This just feels like I'm good at something. But I, I, there's nothing that is feeding my inner mind or, or my spirit, right? And with that, you know, I usually try to explain to, to people, like, your, your gifts usually is either purpose-oriented or it, it, it creates the platform for your purpose to be pushed. So you, you, you may be an athlete or you may be a, 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 an artist, right, or a musician, uh, someone where your gifts has really taken you places and, and you've become so successful, but you still feel this emptiness because uh, you, uh, you, know, you, you're, you feel like the, the gift is just fleeting, right? And I, I think the focus should then be on, well, how can I, and, and I've been taking so much from my gift, right? I've been... Uh, you know, earning all of all of these finances, all of this notoriety, all of this celebrity, all of this success. But what I, what have I been putting into individuals around me? What have I been doing to give back? And I think that that emptiness or that void that you feel, where you, you're still trying to figure out, well, is this my purpose? Am I really serving my purpose? Well, the question should be, am I helping others? And you you look for for ways that your gifts or the gift that you have and the, the success that you've attained can create platforms for you to achieve the uh, connection or the exchanging of, uh, of ideas or, or opportunities for, for other individuals to discover who they are. Um, you know, I, I think life is a, is a cycle, right? And, you know, we're, we're born, we, we go through life and we develop as individuals and, you know, some of us have kids or, you know, some of us have younger siblings, friends, whatever. And as adults or as the elder statesmen in, 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 the, in the world, I think it's our job to teach the generation behind us, to show them uh, the things that we did, the mistakes that we made and the opportunities that they can have uh, and the different ways that we did it and not forcing them to do it the way that we did it, but just giving them a sense of, uh, a process, right? This is this is a process that you can maybe go through, and you can pull and tug and push all of these different buttons and uh, or strings and see what works for you. Because uh, you know everyone's journey is different. You know your journey is much different than mine, and mine is much different than yours. But I think <clears throat> the our our donation back to the to to this earth, right? Leaving leaving something behind that is going to outlive us. I, I think that's the ultimate uh, living of our purpose, right? Because whatever we're, we're gifted to, whatever we're put on this earth for, we're not supposed to take it when we leave, you know, when, when we pass. It's supposed to be something that is left here. And we, the, the journey of life is really discovering what that gift is, what that purpose is, what, what's the why for my life. And I, you know, I, I, I challenge all of you, everyone that's listening to, to this pod, try to answer, first of all, those five important questions. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What can I do? 
Where am I going? And then discover and develop and identify those gifts and talents that you have. If you're unable to really use those gifts and talents to develop a purpose for your, for your life, because you're, you may be multi-talented, try to figure out the common thread that connects all of those gifts, that, that drives you to be so creative or to be so gifted in so many different areas. Or if you're gifted in a particular area and that gift has created a space where you have been, been able to create some success for yourself, uh, but you still feel a, a lack, you still feel a void, then push, push beyond the, 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 the tangible things that you attain from that gift. You know, try to, uh, just, just try to make a donation to, to others, make a donation back to this earth, because that's where you're going to find purpose. You, you find purpose in assisting others. And I think if you're, if you're trying to find or discover your purpose in that scenario, Helping someone else find theirs or discover theirs usually ignites the, the spark that allows you to discover or maybe even rediscover your purpose. Um, and, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, you know, I, con- I continuously think about. You know, each year I set goals for myself, right? And I, I lay out what I, what I ultimately would like to achieve. My, uh, f- for example, my... The thing that I'm passionate about is providing opportunities uh, and and creating uh, success in other individuals. I, I think, you know, the more I'm able to create success for others around me, the more successful that I'm going to be. So my success is never selfish. I'm, and I'm always looking for ways to create to, to create these platforms, to create these opportunities. And, you know, it's it's something that I think started from my grandparents. Um, you know, they were people oriented. My parents were definitely people oriented. And I think it's something that I took on as an individual myself. And, you know, I'm, I'm just so uh, passionate about continuing to uh, develop myself through developing others. <clears throat> and I think, <clears throat> excuse me, the things that I'm successful at and the things that I'm able to attain success from only allows me now to to make, create larger platforms, create a bigger space for me to create those opportunities and for me to help others to discover who they are, to understand why they're here, to know where they're from, to develop and identify the things that they can do, and then to ultimately know where they want to elevate and take themselves. Um, And that's what, that's essentially what, purpose is, uh, is about, what, what life is about. You know, I think it's something that we all need to really focus on and, 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 and just, be, just be intentional about. You know, everything that you do, everything that you experience, be aware of, of everything that's happening because everything that we go through in life happens for a reason. I'm, 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 a, I'm a true believer of that. And, you know, with me, where I'm at now in life and, and going through the big loss of, of my parents, uh, you know, the time that it happened, how it happened. You know, I, f- I feel all of those things aren't by mistake. You know, it, it, it's, not, it's not irrelevant. And I'm, I'm always searching for the bigger picture uh, because, like I said, it's, 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 life is not about just us pleasing us or satisfying ourselves. Uh, it's really about making a donation um, into others. And I think the more we do that, the more successful we'll be. Uh, success isn't a selfish thing. Uh, there's not, you know, success isn't going to run out. I think there's an opportunity for everyone to be successful in their own space. And we should all be assisting and trying to help as much people as we can to do that. Um, so, yeah, man, you know, this is the, the first part. I, I didn't want this to be too long, but I just wanted to share that note. I think that was a good place to start, just telling you a little bit about myself and really describing what purpose is for me, you know, so... Uh, thank you for tuning in. And I have one, one little feature I, I want to do at the end. And, and you know, as, as we go through uh, this new year, you know, I hope that these little insights that I give you guys and these, these uh, little nuggets, I call them milestones, actually. One second. So that's the sound you're going to hear every time I'm about to drop a milestone for you. Okay, so it's... Let's give a clap for them for the milestones that are coming. 
<laughs> All right, so this particular milestone, you know, I, I really thought about this one and, and how I wanted to start off, you know, with the first part. And, and this is the milestone that I, I, I want to give to you guys. So in new seasons and times of transition, we are being pushed into seasons of greater fruitfulness, no matter how stretched and or challenged we may feel. So, you know, coming off of 2020 and coming into an entire, entirely new year, you know, it's, it's, a, it's something where we can uh, understand like where we're at, the challenges that we have gone through or are still going through, but just knowing that we're being challenged because we're being pushed into a new space of greater, of, of just greater success. And we have to take advantage of all the opportunities, no matter how small they may be, no matter how challenging they may be, but taking advantage of, of uh, those opportunities and just looking at things from a different pr- perspective, you know, not being negative all the time, but trying to stay as positive as we can. All right. Well, you know, I just want to, again, thank you guys for just tuning in uh, just chilling with me this this first episode you know this is something that i'm hoping to continue to do uh for the rest of this year i'm trying to i'm going to try and give you a pod you know each week so wherever you're listening to this you know please subscribe to it uh wherever you're watching this please subscribe to it uh and just you know just ride come on this ride with me uh as we elevate ourselves um to the next level of life all right that's episode one of the Miles High podcast.